Prozan, Prozan, heroes. Gonna tell you about Prozan, Prozan, heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Fat Flash, Bat Baby, and other Silver Age shenanigans. Welcome into Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I'm Zach, joined as always by Mace. Oh, sorry. No, I'm joined by Mike. <laughs> I was just thinking we uh, have another podcast funny. that we've started doing. Yes. Every week where as an Mason extension of I, this one. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talk about the drops of the week, the things that we go and pick celebrities up. that have died during the week. Yeah. Uh funny enough, it's a very morbid show, but we try to bring <laughs> as much <laughs> as much energy to it as we can. Ah, they were uh, great. But no, uh Mason and I kind of talk alive. about what's coming out that week, uh, things we've picked up, recommendations, uh, maybe even some graps and stuff. It's it's a, a nice little way for us to talk comics. That's cool. And keep a tab on what's going on each week. Whoever had that idea was a genius. Uh, Mike, do you want to go ahead and take credit for it? No. Okay. Uh, Mike came up with the idea. He's a <laughs> That's genius. Not true. I did use air quotes on that. I'm yeah, not going to fully that. give Thank it to you. him. Like, yeah. I'm just going to give him enough, no, it but was, not enough to get it. Honestly, enough. it was Mason, because he would come in here with his comic books, and we've been talking about starting another comic book show, maybe one where people actually understand what they're talking about rather no. than me. And so um, this was just kind of a natural extension no. of that. It's but nice. It's, yeah. it's, it's been... I think it's cool. Yeah, no, it's been fun. I would Hopefully, Mason's had fun doing it so far. He has. Look at his face. He gave a thumbs up. Yeah, the, like a kid on Christmas. We'll, we'll we'll give it like four or five more episodes, and <laughs> we'll see. Right, maybe yeah. we ask him, and then he just like thumbs up, and he just turns it. Hey, like the other Joaquin, one, Joaquin uh, Phoenix, Joaquin and Phoenix and Gladiator. Gladiator yeah. I hear they're making another Gladiator with Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, is um, he the Gladiator this time? Yeah, they switched it. <laughs> Russell Crowe's the <laughs> Russell Crowe's the king now. Hey, uh, yeah, I want to talk about another show just real quick. Yeah, no, while we're on this, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Bibliophobia. Ooh. Uh, this is Mason's show that he is doing all about books. Ooh. The first episode was Stephen King's It. Uh, I'm being oh, told well, no. Mason I'm so says, sorry. hold on, on, Mike. Close. It was The Mist. Oh, The Mist. That's what I meant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was picturing the, the cover in my head, and then I said the Can I one. ask you a question? Please. And it, I'm not going to full out ask it. Mm-hmm. Because it would be a spoiler, but I will. It's ask, great audio I've when you seen, ask a question, but don't really ask it. Well, here, okay, here's stuff. I get here's the thing. So <laughs> I've seen the movie. Yes, is the ending of the book similar of the mist? Yes, no, very different. Okay, okay. that movie right. ending does not happen. It's actually it, a mo- the book's ending is more melancholy, hopeful. It's, yeah. Where oh, okay. the yeah. ending for okay. the movie is just no, it's so movies, gut movies just gut wrenching. Yeah, oh it is. man. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and by the way, we were here the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoops. If you, you just would have waited, just waited one more. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, but so okay, so I, I'm gonna have to go check that out. Yeah, I, it's I don't, only 150 pages too. I don't know how you oh. feel about it, Mason, but I I like that movie. I think the movie's good. Oh, no, it's a good movie too. I okay. I personally don't like the ending because well, it's kind of like comparing. I mean, sh- I, it's a good, it's a great ending. It's an excellent yeah. ending. Yeah. But in terms of the stories I like, sure. I prefer where there's some semblance of hope at yeah. the end, and that I mean it works in, t- in terms of you know. Can no, we? Yeah, it's just like we can talk about the the Last of Us now, right? Yeah, yes, we can. at this point because obviously yeah. I feel like we yeah. should because yeah. sure. one, the video game has been out since 2013, and the Did you see TV the finale, show Mike? followed it. What have Did you, you see seen the, the finale? finale? Yeah, okay. yeah, okay, cool. yeah, and the TV show followed it beat for beat. For Did not feel like a finale, part. but I saw it. Well, it's yeah. well, it set it up for season two, which yeah. but now mm-hmm. I heard that game two is going to be told over multiple seasons. Which if I mm. mean. If you're gonna, I said this on Twitter. You gotta stretch it out somehow. Yeah, not, well, HBO's not gonna let this die. Yeah, which yeah. helps them. But uh, I think it's five seasons. It would do much better for mm-hmm. Abby's character too if they stretch this. Oh, out. for yeah. sure. Yeah. But so really, that girl, that girl's gonna be six foot tall by the time this thing's uh, over. She might be. Yeah. Uh, but so great show. Loved it. Loved the video game too. But that story there is as good as it is. Yeah. Like I'm kind of with Mason. It is just so bleak that sometimes I would get done watching that and be like. Man, I kind of feel like watching cartoons or something. Just something to be like a little, <laughs> little pet back in my stuff. I'm just saying that that's it, why part, the game part two. I just 
I respect what it does. I just yeah. don't I like it just because part two is it. Part one beats you over the head with how sad. Part two is even worse. Man, wow. it's just see, and no I, I kind of, I kind of like the I, fact that I've sucks. never played the game. Yeah, no, it, it, I knew very little about it going in. I just knew the basic story and kind of really what was happening. I need to text my parents about this because they. But I will tell you that I do they feel. What? My parents haven't played the game either. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I will tell you that. It'd be kind of weird if your parents had played the game. Yeah, but yeah, even knowing, sitting around like, playing even know what's going to happen in some instances from having played it, seeing it still played out like with real people was still yeah. exact. But like, yeah. um, it, it's funny because in the game, you have the option, and I, it's been forever since I've played it. But in the hospital, when you go, you remember when Joel like goes and gets Ellie at the end? Yeah. yeah. You and have to kill the one it, doctor. You have to, but it's sure. the whole scene of it's just like Joel has gone senselessly angry in mm-hmm. a sense, mm-hmm. and he is taking out whoever is keeping him from Ellie. Yeah, and it is a very powerful scene in there. But in the game, you can sneak around, and the only person you have to kill is that one doctor. Right, because they but make it you doesn't kill work for well. plot reasons. Yeah, yeah but it sure. doesn't really work. It was things like that that, like, obviously. There was more stealth in the game that'd be hard to trans, you know. I will say that those two together work really, really really well. But then being able to flesh out the story a little bit more, like David became creepier. Like he was already creepy. I would argue he was a better character in terms of character. He was a better character in the game. He was, it's always creepier in live action because it's, 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 because before it's Ashley Johnson was like 20. When they did that, she, by the way, was fantastic yeah. in the in finale. She was mm-hmm. Ellie's mom. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the girl. Yeah. She is very good. Yeah, who voice. actually she's, she's the voice of the actual. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I thought, like I said, real quick before I let you guys get, um, yeah. I thought Dave was a better character overall, and, and he's it's mm-hmm. creepier because it's an actual. Granted, Bella, Bella, um, is actually like eighteen, but still, when you see a grown man, yeah, pre- uh, being yeah, a predator yeah, yeah, yeah. for, I just, I just thought it was regardless. such a yeah, yeah, good yeah. job of revealing who the guy was without really revealing who the guy was. Oh, when he was when, like, when he's holding her hand and she goes, oh, that was that was like the turning point where she went, oh shit, you're a pedophile. You know, that kind of thing. And so it was, I thought that was really well done. Yeah. yeah it was. Yeah. Well, I also love the scene where, you know, he, he was like, we had, you know, so-and-so of our sure. member died. Sure. And you're just not waiting for it. And she was, he's just like, you know, and it was, mar- it's the same way in the game. And I loved when it caught you. So they were seen, you know, murdered by a girl and, a, you know, mm-hmm. and it catches off guard. Anyway, mm-hmm. we're not here to talk about the, the Last of Us, which is a great show. Join us on our Last of Us podcast. Let's get into some Silver Age shenanigans, shall we, Mike? I have four stories from the great, great Silver Age of DC. And I say this. Wonderful. Uh, some people do not like this. I love how campy and just ridiculous yeah, there they is some, are. I'm so sorry. You're I fine. always kick you in the feet. That's okay. I don't mean to. Feel, no, feel yeah, free. Fine. You know. Um, I know. Open up. Funny enough, it's late in the 60s. I was telling Mason about this earlier yeah. off air. There's a book I'm reading called Slugfest, and I think it's by Reed Tucker. And I've probably got about, I don't know how much left of it. I feel like I'm about 75% of the way through Show it. Show me that again. We're in the, uh, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah, 12 pages. Yeah, uh, we're in the 90s, so we still got a little bit of ways to go, but it's about essentially kind of like the DC Marvel rivalry. Okay. And um, DC kept putting stuff out like this all through the 60s and into the 70s kind of, and that was the problem because Marvel stories were more grown up, and it was the late 60s where Marvel finally passed DC, and in all actuality, since the late 60s, DC's never been able, aside maybe a couple months here and there, yeah. DC's never fully been able to be back on top in terms of comic sales. Right. Like other things, sure. Like they've had products that were bigger. Like Tim Burton's Batman was huge when Marvel oh, yeah. didn't have anything sure. like that. Sure. But at least in terms of comics, since then, Marvel has always been on top. Yeah. And it's because DC uh, was a little late to the um, party. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, no, no, no. Mason, for everything please. other than Batman. That's Batman true. always yeah. outsells everything, yeah. but that's only because there's like a thousand Batman books. Sure. Yeah, there have always yeah. been a lot of Batman. But Batman is just their best character. That's Su- all there is Superman, to it. I mean. Superman has also sold a lot too, but there have always been, well, not as many, yeah. but he but, was always in action and he's always, yeah. they had multiple yeah. Superman but books. But anything too. other than those two typically is outsold by Marvel. Yes. Um, and it's all kind of because in a way they were late to adopt the more grown up approach or realize yeah. that, you know, more than, you know, kids were buying these books right um yeah i always felt like marvel was really good at humor uh but understated humor not necessarily overt 
comic book type humor that yeah, yeah, DC yeah. was going for. Exactly. And this is very yeah. much... you can, I mean, It's reflected very well in the movies, too. Yeah. No, for sure. And you can kind of feel in a way that this was written in a sense for kids. Yeah. Uh, but it's what makes these great to see these did, heroes that we know and love in ridiculous situations. Did either of you see Ant-Man? No. You did? And you thought it was okay? Yeah. He says, oh, says kind of. Yeah, it was the hand of waiver. Uh-huh. Like, eh, uh-huh. eh. Uh-huh. So our first adventure... Yeah. We're going to get to comes from The Flash number 115. Interesting thing I found out from this book too. <clears throat> two two. Uh so The Flash which I don't we never got into the origin of the original Flash. The original Flash Jay Garrick created back in the early 40s became The Flash from hard water, vaporized hard water. What? I, yes. That is how he became able to run super fast. You know, sometimes if you live in a place with not so great water, uh, if you just vaporized it and huffed it, apparently in the 40s, you, you could fast. run really fast. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, uh, we're not, they still had the heavy metals in the in Exactly. The I'm not yeah. telling you to do that. I'm saying according to 1940s comic book logic, mm-hmm. that's how you become the Flash. Mm-hmm. But that comic had ended, and DC had come back with this idea of what they called DC Showcase okay. for a new book, and they were just introducing new stories every week. Yeah. Well, I can't remember who the writer was. Uh, it might have been Carmine Infantino. I feel like I'm wrong. I'm attributing whoever it was at God, the how time. How you get that wrong? I know. Ooh. Was bringing up that, hey, I'm going to bring back the Flash. Okay. And so when they brought it back, they just continued his numbering yeah. from the original run. Oh, really? Oh, so wow. Flash always That's seems crazy. like it keeps going. Yeah. Huh. So picked it up when wow. it finally got its own series. It picked up with like issue number 100 and something or like 70 something. So this was from. 1960. I'll start with our earliest. Yeah. I was going to just go in chronological order for these, but um, there's something in the Batman book that was just too good. I had to wait till the end. So we're moving okay. a little bit out of it. All right. But we have the Flash featuring or, uh, the Flash number 115 from September mm-hmm. of 1960 mm-hmm. is the new stand date on this. And it's the Flash featuring the day Flash weighed a thousand pounds. A thousand. So that's the story here, and our cover shows My thousand pound Flash life. going from very skinny to Puff, very big. I can hardly run. And that's also how we oh see my God, he's so big. it sets it up here. But he tells him, uh, he's like, what do you have in your hand? Wait, who's and he Flash fighting says, here? Who is this guy? It's a dude named uh, Dawson's his last name. I'll oh. explain. It's not. It doesn't matter who the dude creek? is. Well, I'll, I'll explain more who okay. this guy is right, in a right. second. He's just bald, and he's got like a laser gun and then, kind of thing. Yeah, and then extremely large Flash is holding flash. a needle, right? It's like a weapon. I love how the needle is like, <laughs> it's so shiny. It is. So it's kind of teasing you of what's coming in this issue. But okay. then we transfer over to Gorilla City. Gorilla City. Now, we've talked about Gorilla Grodd before. Come he's a to Flash beautiful villain downtown where he's Gorilla an extremely sm- an, a genius level gorilla, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and he was constantly escaping out of prison. So the Flash and There's the something I rest, really like about that genius gorilla. I don't know what it is. That's fine. But the chieftain of Gorilla City yeah. and the people built an in and Flash built like an impenetrable fort that they wouldn't be able for him to escape. Yeah. He's he's so smart. He uses stuff that he's able to gather from the ground. Sure. Don't know how. No, it's good. He's He's a gorilla. Yeah, he's able to create a pill that once he takes it, when he dies, his body uh, will be dead. But, oh, here, according to my calculations, this pill will make me collapse. Then, at the instant I die, my mind and memory will leave me and enter some other living being. Oh. It's a terrible risk. He goes about how I could wind up in the body of a fish. Or in like, you know, a mountain lion or yeah. a bird. Yeah. But it's better than being stuck in this unescapable prison. Sure. So he does it. Which is made of glass. He collapses. The guards notice that he's dead. So they're like, oh, we should tell Flash that Gorilla Grodd's dead then. Since mm-hmm. he's, you know, he's always interested in what's going on there. I love that he's just on the phone. Yeah. Like so he picks up a phone and he calls Flash on like his gamma wave. I don't remember how they describe it. It's not an actual phone. And it gamma walks, wave like, wavelengths. Phone. I don't know. <laughs> but they tell him like, hey, Gorilla Grodd's dead. Yeah. Um, so they talk about, they figure out. We then are cut to this man on the street. Uh, and all of a sudden it says, uh, he's like leaning up, kind of collapsed up against the wall here. Yeah. And he's like, I made it. I'm, I'm alive. Me, Grodd. And I'm, I'm a human, but oh. who am I? Oh. And he shuffles through his papers and he sees that his name is a, is William Dawson. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so, so can you give me just, just elevator pitch here? 
um, why does Gorilla Grodd hate the Flash? What's the what's the thing there? Either one of you, no idea. Really? I haven't read early. Oh, okay. Early. I'm just Flash wondering. Enough. Yeah, I'm just wondering why do they hate each other. I just know he's always been a villain. I don't know what the core of it is. Yeah. Like yeah. at the same time, it's in a way like why is the core reason that Joker's a Batman villain? Sure. Well, that was never. I mean, it was. I, he was but just a it, gangster, right? Well, in a way, but I think in a lot of instances, it's just always kind of left, like, the yeah. big ones. Like, yeah, we know that Lex Luthor always just wants to seem, like, the smartest and, like, the, you know, yeah. best person around. But it's just simple narcissism. Like, But, I mean, Gorilla Grodd has always gone up against the Flash, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if he All started right. somewhere else. Yeah. I can look it up. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Well, that's for another day. But All I'm right. just saying. I'll, I'll yeah. try to work on I would an love to for know you. that relationship. You so, know? Gorilla Grodd has transformed into this William Dawson guy. Mm -hmm. And he goes, because William Dawson. A lot, a lot of Lex Luthor lookalikes here. Yes, exactly. Um, but he pulls out. He also notices a piece of paper that he essentially has like a job to go to. Okay. Like a job interview. And he shows up. And it's for a circus. Thank God that was in his pocket. Huh? Right. And he shows up and it's a circus. And sure. it's to help with the animals. He's like, I'm looking for an animal wrangler. Uh -huh. I got a chimp act, but the chimp act don't work. Okay. That's essentially what he's saying. He's like, one of the bucket guys doesn't get it. Well, it's the it's the monkeys and they're all trying to put trying out Trying to fire. dump out the fire and they're dumping yeah. the water. And one of them just dumps it on the monkey. Yeah. Well, William Dawson goes over to the monkey and he talks to him as of a monkey because obviously he's Gorilla Grodd. Right. So he can speak the same language. Okay. And so they understand he gets it right. And the guy's like, wow, you're hired. You're going to be our animal wrangler, essentially. You're hired. Well, he, Gorilla Grodd gets bored of just working there. So he takes his band of monkeys and they go and they go on a robbing spree. Uh oh. Uh, so they start stealing things until they're caught by the flash and he realizes, hey, all these monkeys here, they trace them down to the circus. And he tells them, yeah, my monkeys were missing. Also, the guy, William Dawson, we just hired is missing, too. I don't know if he's associated with it, but mm. he's gone as well. It will not stop jumping on the bed. He realizes, uh, Grodd realizes that the Flash is interfering with his plans, so he creates this gun. Can I can I reference this real quick? How oh, the, Flash's suit comes out of a ring? He all, it always comes out of a ring. On his hand? Is yeah. that always been a thing? It's going to be in the new movie, too. They showed the scene. I'm pretty sure of it. For, yeah, it's been it for a while. That's really odd. No, it's popped out. Of, remember, even it's so in, tiny though. Even the black and yellow hideous one with shorts that Frank Miller did popped out that. of the ring. Remember? Yeah. No, I don't remember that. Okay. This yeah, is, this is the first the time too. I remember it popping out no, of a it's ring. It's always yeah. been. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm I, just, I'm just getting history on things as, I, as we go here. We maybe we need to talk about Flash more. Well, then. I'm not a big. I've never been a big Flash. Whatever. I was I'm never like a DC guy. Honestly, Wolverine was always my favorite. <laughs> Because you mentioned how much you don't like Wolverine. Was he really? <laughs> he was one of my favorites, yeah. I learned to draw using hey, Wolverine, Mike, Wolverine. Wolverine and can suck it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Using Wolverine and <laughs> Spider-Man comics. That's how I learned to draw. Really? I just started tracing and tracing and then finally started doing it on my own. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. You want to know something that's kind of, even though I'm 34 that, years old, I'm trying to learn to draw right really? now, too. Yeah. You can, it, it's definitely a taught skill. I mean, you can, you can learn. Um, the, the one I remember that I had on my wall was the one, it's a yellow cover with Wolverine just holding up his, his claws in front of it. This is probably 80, 86. You want me to like tell that, you something? Maybe. There's a good chance that Frank Miller wrote that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I don't remember the story. I just remember the cover. I couldn't tell you which Spider-Man I had, but there was one on the wall too. No, I know which one. I have a couple. I don't think I have that one. Also, while he's looking that up, Mason, you ever read Camelot 3000? I read something about that recently. Is it that one? Yep, that's it. And no, oh, the, the Claremont Wolverine? No, I have never read Camelot 3000. I want to, at, maybe at some point. I always no. loved that. I, I liked the story. I thought it was really good. I'm sorry, not writer. Yeah, Claremont wrote it. Yeah, and, Frank uh, Miller was the artist. Oh, was yeah. he really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, it was... Back when his art yeah. was really popping off. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. That one was this hanging is, on my wall. This is, in a yeah, bag. this is eighty two. Yeah. This he's working 82. on that. He's working on Daredevil. Ooh this is right before he does Ronin, which. Uh, so I was eleven. Dude, that book I've read. I wish I would have listened to it before. We had talked about. Um, you talk about a sweet spot Ronin for a, kid. a little bit of how. 
<laughs> well, I'm just no, saying no, 11 with sure. comic books. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, yeah. the perfect age. But we talked a little bit about Ronan when we talked about our Frank Miller episodes when we mm-hmm. did those back to back about how it was big for the industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But listening to that Slugfest book, um, they talk about it was big just because it kind of led them down the graphic novel path of like, hey, we could do this. Wait, what is it? Wasn't the, necessarily Ronin itself. When yeah, you said Slugfest not, earlier, I thought you were talking about a comic book. No, this it's, is a it's, book? A, it's a book book about the two about, about DC yeah. and Marvel. Oh, it's a lot. Oh, Man, really? Yeah. There's the issue of Mr. Miracle. I didn't know about this that I found of where Mr. Miracle is essentially trying to be swindled out of of everything that he makes as an escape artist by a guy named Funky Flash, who oddly looks enough uh, looks a lot like Stan Lee, who no. even has like a butler around his house called, yep, that's it, called uh, House Roy, who was House then Roy. Stan Lee, looks like that, it was supposed to be then Stan Lee's assistant, Roy Thomas. Oh, wow. And it is just complete satire Ooh, an and just book. makes fun i'm actually I ha, I'm, I'm listening to it as well mm-hmm. it, it's really it's it's good okay. it's good i've and, enjoyed it a lot and they are right up ronin's a good book it, at least at the time it sold but it didn't you know uh but with that so like you know this mr miracle book is just poking so much fun out of it and you find out from like this book this this is one of the stories told is it's like jack kirby had just left Marvel. And yeah. it was, oh, he was there very was a fallout at Marvel. Salty. And I found out from reading something else, like what it's based off of, I can put it together when you hear the story, but it's because of how he felt at Marvel. And like years later, he apologized to Roy Thomas for it. And Roy was like, you know, it's fine. I'm over it. But like Stan's deeply hurt by this. And it was something they would have to get, like he would have to apologize to Stan about before he went back and worked at Marvel, I think too. I, but, really, hope, I really hope those two made up before... Jack I, Best. I, it, I heard they did. I hope they did. But so it essentially what it caused it was at the time a history of Marvel comics had come out and essentially Stan single handedly had taken credit for creating like all the characters they had done together. And Kirby was just so like everything I read is Kirby was I, 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 nice guys. I mean, he, he always seemed like a bit of a gruff guy, but he always seemed, you know, at least that he did the right thing in a lot of instances. I read how I'm getting off on a tangent and I'm just kind of looking at Mason doing this, but how doing Vin- all good. Vince Coletta was one of his inkers on the new God stuff. And he like stole some of his pages yep. and leaked it to Marvel of this new stuff he's working on. And Jack was still so worried about taking another man's paycheck. Cause he grew up in, you know, like the depression and stuff like that. That it was just like, he's just not working on my new God stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. And they just put him on like the Jimmy Olsen stuff he was working on instead. Wow. Like he he couldn't even fire a guy stealing his own stuff. So to be fair, what Stan, when Stan made those claims, it it was was kind of fucked up, Stan. mm -hmm. And and I love Stan, but like, damn, that, that was messed up. And then it's been, it seems like ever since he did that, it's been at least the time until Kirby passed a lot of like, Oh no, we made it together. Or it's like if Jack wants to say he did, then he did. Like it was a lot of. But anyway, there's a lot of interesting stories in that. One last fun thing before cool. you finish your thing, Funky Flash. I know you said, and you'll hear this on Wednesday, people. Funky Flash. It does appear in uh, Mr. Miracle. Yes, I, I know that too. Oh, I'm looking forward to that so much. We're gonna talk about that uh, after I get done reading it too. I just downloaded the book, so. Oh, I, will, it's, I will I will be better informed. I will tell you it's like what uh, twelve hours, ten hours, ten hours, ten hours. 44 I have minutes. I have two hours left. Oh, cool! So yeah. and I haven't enjoyed awesome. it all. So back to the Flash, uh, Gorilla Grodd as William Dawson, the human. Yeah, decides hey, Flash is messing with my plans. I'm going to create a gun to finally take care of him forever. Uh, and it essentially, do you want the science of it or do you just not? I'm not going to get into it. It's fine. Uh, yeah, what's the science? Come on. Fine. Give me the science. Here, here he goes. Uh, as ultra, cu- as the Bubble ultra gun. cunning gorilla mine labors over some stolen scientific equipment, this instrument involving uh, s- startling new scientific principles will be just the thing to rid me of my pesky, pesky I cannot read, enemy uh, forever. He tells him, where was it at? Here we go. Oh. He only brought her body in. Does he not give the science to it? I thought no, he did. It's just a gun, man. It, you no. don't know why this gorilla hates this dude, and it's just a gun. Fine. He just no, made a he gun. does. He made he, a fat gun. Oh, here we go. My gun by spe- by special radiation. Special causes, radiation causes the body to absorb moisture, 
from the air at an incredible rate Holy and crap. swells its victim like Come a balloon. on. So it gives him water weight? So he <laughs> shot him with this ray gun, yeah. and we see the flash, and, and the same panel just start getting really big and balloon up. Then, so if you already take water pills, this won't hurt you? No. You, you should be fine. Okay. But then gotcha. something that's not explained <laughs> I don't know how to answer this, but apparently Gorilla Grodd has magic powers, and he has a little bit of his magic left as mm. William Dawson to make the Flash forget who he is. Oh, wow. So with amnesia... He's got a men in black built in his head. With amnesia, uh, Gorilla Grodd, William Dawson, mm -hmm. you know, takes Flash back to the sideshow and the, car, the circus he was at mm -hmm. and leaves him there for people to come and look at him. And the flash Look at the thousand pound flash. Yeah, and people wow. don't know who he is. All right, he doesn't know who he is. So his sister is like, "Why are people laughing at me?" Oh wow! Yeah, and that's like, crazy. And they're like, "Oh, it's so funny. He's probably so slow." And they dressed him up like the Flash, but they don't know it's the real Flash. Oh, gotcha. Then, as the Flash is walking by, one that seems day, like a seamless plan. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna. <laughs> then, as the Flash that's gonna is, work out is great. walking around the circus one day, he walks by the Hall of Mirrors and he sees himself skinny and he realizes, "Wait." I wasn't always like this. I oh. used to be skinny in the flash, and I fought crime. So <laughs> All it took was a funhouse mirror. mirror. So then he walks over to uh, his plan of how he's going to get skinny again, Mike. Mm -hmm. He walks over to a place called For Instant, or it has a billboard that says For Instant Delight, eat dehydrated potatoes. Dehydrated potatoes. That's right. He sits in a place with a potato dehydrator. Potato chips. And he sweats out all the excess weight. Is that not what we're talking about? Potato I, I chips? Think so, yeah. They're called dehydrated potatoes at the time. But look, look at that just, it's just, just coming out of it. That's gross. Right? Well, then. He's a sweaty boy. He shows back up to Will, see William Dawson, and he's still fat. And you think, yeah, where did it all oh, go? it didn't work. Well, that's where the pin comes that's in. That's the problem with dehydrated potatoes. It doesn't work. Sometimes they work, sometimes they so don't. So he poke he pulls out a pin and he pokes himself to reveal that he only blew his You gotta suit be up. fucking kidding me. Come on. <laughs> I try very hard not to use the F word, but damn it. Come on, he popped he himself. Blew, he did. Well no, like he had already shrank down and he blew his suit back up to make Dawson think he was still fine. Oh, and then popped himself. What a wonderful and plan. Dived oh, and caught him and so took him out. So much difference. And then <laughs> that's it. That's the end of that that's it? story. Yeah. He catches, you know, Gorilla Grodd as William Dawson and they take him to jail. All right. Our second one, uh, real quick, and then we'll take a short little break, yeah. is a Superboy story. He, we know you Superboy. love Superboy. He's a turd. Uh, this one, it's going to be a little bit quicker, but it's very, very interesting. It's about fighting Boba Fett. the Rainbow Raider. Oh. So we see this guy. I just had to put that in to make uh, the printing work out. Oh, it's just a random. That. Look at Ollie. Yeah. So it shows Superboy. Well, you know how they always like to give away part yeah, of the story. Yeah, yeah, sure, so let's get sure. past it. But we see, like, we're inside this jewelry store, and there's a painter painting a wall behind him. I guess it's getting ready for an opening, like what a jewelry a store terrible opening. terrible name for a villain or hero. Well, it's rainbow because Raider. the diamond thing on top of his head emits, like, a, a disco rainbow ball ray. on his head. Yeah. Uh, and he's wearing the Pontiac logo on his belt. But this guy walks in, and they're like, oh, it looks like one of these crazy, you know, costume guys is after us. And he essentially looks at them all. <laughs> crazy costume guys. He essentially looks at the guys and he's like, uh, excuse me, gentlemen, how about you dump all of your diamonds here into this bag? And they're like, oh, sure, of course we will. Sure, Rainbow and Boy. And they do it, and he leaves with all of it. And as soon as they leave, they're like, what did we do? Yeah. We were under control of his the rainbow. rainbow ray. The rainbow will do it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they call the cops to tell them what happened, and they gets outside to the cops, and Rainbow's like, uh, he says, all right, you're not going any further. And then the next panel... They're taking the bags to his getaway car for him. And he's like, thank yeah. you, gentlemen, for carrying it for yeah. us. Essentially, this Rainbow Raider is able to use the gym disco ball on his head, as Mike calls it, yeah. to essentially just tell people what to do. He's a little thicker than most bad guys. He is. Like, its suit seems very... Very tight. Yeah. Yeah. And what is going on here? Uh, that's where the cops are carrying the jewels. No, to no, his no, getaway no. Car I mean, home. what is going on specifically right here oh, around that, his crotch I don't, I don't area? Know. I, didn't, I didn't notice that until just. <laughs> it like, looks like he's carrying a sack of potatoes under his bit. belt. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, God bless him, but you know. The then we see a second hijinks <laughs> ensue. 
Uh, there's a we see a dinner headline. scene with Ma and Pa Kent oh, okay. and Superboy there. Yeah. At the Big table. headline says crime is a breeze for Rainbow Raiders. Victims and law gladly cooperate. So we see now that Rainbow Raider shows up at a football game. Yeah, steals the ball. And he tells the clerk there, hey, just empty the toll or, you know, the That's where you're going to make your big money. You go to a football game in the 40s or whenever this was. Where everybody's at. Oh, you collect a dime per person? Come on. He's like, give me the gate. And they're dumping it in the bag. He's gladly cooperating. 12,000 dimes. He goes to make the getaway, and he's running uh, kind of through the field. And the players see him, and they're like, Oh, we should go ahead and tackle him. Yeah. But Superboy's in and he's like, Superboy, take me to safety. Mm-hmm. And Superboy's like, Oh, of course. And sure, as he's Rainbow flying Boy. away, Rainbow uh Warriors her or Raider. the Rainbow Raider is heard saying Like it matters. You know, like I could have gotten <laughs> I could have gotten the football players under my control, but yeah. they would have been too close. They would have still hurt me sure. in there, just you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. adoration for yeah, me. Yeah. So then he has him drop him off and he flies away. I've got enough football players following me. And there's a radio report that even Superboy can't stop oh. the Rainbow Raider because he's able to control yeah. our Superboy. He is the so, dumbest villain so that I've seen today. The big mob boss at the time here in Smallville, whoever he is, gets word like, hey, we need to see if this guy's an alien. Boss Mobby. And that's how he's able, boss Mobby. Mm-hmm. That's how he's able to control everybody. Or if he's a human, then we got to see what his thing is, like how he's able sure. to do it. Let's see. So his they thing. set up like a fake. <laughs> I love. <laughs> Keep going. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's one scene that I really love. So they set up a like fake jewelry store, <laughs> and they let him in. And as they walk fake in, jewelry store. they cut the lights. So and as stupid. they cut the lights, they're able to set up a, like an X-ray, Come and they on. see he has it's the the X-ray in, thing that's killing me. And they know, oh, he is a human. Now he, well, we can try to. You work see with the human him. skeleton, but on his head is still the big bucket that he wears, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> And so they were like, all right, work with us. And he's like, no, I work alone. And the guys then come in and they grab the diamond and they're like, well, fine, if you're not going to work with us. Off the top of his head. Yeah, off the top of his head. We'll use your little disco ball here to keep people (laughs) under our control then. All of a sudden, Superboy comes in and rounds up all the mobsters but protects the Rainbow Raider. Mm -hmm. And he takes all the mobsters out to leave. Or to, I'm sorry, to leave to put him up in the police wagon sure, sure. and as Patty he walks wagon. him up the cops go that's such a brilliant plan of you Superboy, to have this rainbow raider guy as a fake super villain mm. for to draw the mob out so we would know where they would be at he was like we only pretended to go along with doing what he wanted to that's a couple of leaps now let's see yeah. who the rainbow raider yeah. is yeah sure and they go and unmask him and superboy's like no we nobody must ever know who the no, rainbow raider no, you is. can't see who the rainbow you want to know why because the rainbow raider's paw can't <laughs> So this was a plan all along? The plan all along was to have Paul Kent dress up like a superhero, or a superhero, a supervillain. Oh, and that's why he's in, a thick boy. Yeah, and ask people to do things. And Superboy always told him, hey, when this weird guy comes in, just do what he says. That was their plan to get the mob out of hiding. That is bullshit. Is what that <laughs> is. <laughs> all right. That's the perfect place for us to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap up our Silver Age shenanigans right after this. Rainbow Raider. And we are back. Ooh, I'm refreshed. All right, well, let's yeah. go ahead and get into our last two Silver Age Shenanigan stories for it. us here. And the first one is from, we're going out of order a little bit. This one's from uh, November of 1967, and it's Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, Mm. uh, issue number 79. I didn't say it on the last one, but uh, it was Superboy issue number 84 from October. Right. Of 1960. Okay. So and we're this jumping is up when seven again? Years. I'm sorry. This uh, 67. Okay. Of November of 67. Is that the Red Hood? Uh, no, it is Titan Man. Oh, I'm sorry. The Red Hood's Marvel, isn't it? Uh, you, no, Red right? Hood is DC, but that's uh, uh, Batman. Who's the guy that fought against um, Captain America? Uh, Red Skull. No, not Red Skull. There's a guy who puts on a, he puts on a purple hood. Who's that? Who's the purple hood guy? Zemo. Zemo. Okay. Love his TVs. <laughs> so, 
Uh, let's get into the, the reason I included this story. It's just a quick little. Yeah. But the cover, I love Jerk Superman. And it's <laughs> Lois Lane looks like she's getting married to Titan Man, mm -hmm. featuring the bride of Titan Man. And yeah. Lois says, Superman, stop my wedding to Titan Man. I just found out the terrible secret his mark or his mask is hiding. And Superman says, serves you right for choosing him over me, Lois. Marry him. Wow, what a dick. Right? Uh, spoiler alert, it has nothing to do with what's under his mask. That's the problem. No, it's what's under his belt. Mm. <laughs> no, not Gross. that either. We'll get to it. <laughs> so the story is uh, Lois is at the paper, <laughs> and Jimmy is talking to some skinny girl named Twiggy, I guess rightfully so, and he's like, oh, all these dudes her just name want is Twiggy? Her, her name. I don't know if it's a nickname or not. Well, you know, that was a supermodel like in the 60s. Yeah. Uh, and Lois is just like, oh, that's what all these guys want. And then there's this guy who looks like he's supposed to be washing windows, but really has a ray. He's from the anti-Superman syndicate, and he's been offered 50 Excuse grand. Anti-Superman syndicate. What the fuck? And he's been offered 50 grand to try out their new annihilation rate. Well, they shoot it, and it hits Superman, and it bounces off of him. And it hits Lois, and she's taken to a different dimension where the Daily Planet is now called the Daily Dimension. Uh, Perry White no longer works there as editor. Instead, he has a pizza place called Perry's Pizza Parlor. Perry's and Pizza it, Parlor. And it's him tossing P -P -P. pizza. And Lois is like, I know it. I've been taken to a different world that's close to mine but different. Oh. But then she sees all those skinny girls are there, and they're laughing at her because she's uh -huh. a bit thicker. Yeah, thick. Look at her. You got hips. Yeah. Oh, look You're at her figure. He's, she's ridiculous, right? <laughs> then all these sh cops show up. She is not big, by the way. No, not at all. She is not skinny, at if all. Anything. She looks like Veronica in this thing from Archie. Yeah. Uh, then the no, cop just this girl I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, she looks like. <laughs> then the cops show up, and the cops are all little people. Why do um, they have them, such giant helmets? But they they are drawn comically, and they call them midgets throughout this sure, whole thing. Sure, sure. Um, but. Lois mistakes them for kids as they try to grab, like, hey, miss, you're causing a scene. Like, you need to move on before you start something. And one of them grabs her, and she goes, kid, keep your hands off me. And she pushes and shoves him down. Oh. And so they take her in. Like, they shoot her with a ray that disorients her and, like, kind of Horse. knocks her out. Midget ray. And they, it takes four of them to carry in the <laughs> Their hats are so big. Hey, do you think they had to change the name of those tiny cars? Like, you know those midget racing cars? I don't you know. You know what I'm talking about? No. I, like, there's actual midget racing cars, right, where they're, they're smaller cars. Yeah, more I don't compact. know if they have a different I wonder if they had to now. change them. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, so Lois wakes up in a jail cell where she finds out that their thing is they think that if you see what you did it'll uh -huh. cause you to repent so you're left in your cell with a giant picture of what you did so why is mo fine on the other side of this that's another her cellmate next to her but so she's reminded of repent your crime it's a picture of her pushing the person down <laughs> <laughs> but she notices a guy working out outside that is ridiculous who looks like super buff and he comes up like he can read her mind and he rescues her and he reveals himself to be Titan Man, and he seems to kind of be the Superman of this world. This is the um, um, mask guy on the cover. Well, what I'm saying is, this is a uh, uh, like Long a co-ed prison. Yeah, it is. Wow. So she falls. How progressive. She falls kind of in love at first sight with Titan Man, and he helps her yeah. escape this jail. She loves his big T. And puts his her mask on, and he goes to his planet, and he announces to everybody. That I've chosen a bride and How everybody do you get out of loves. Jail? He was just he had he shown just hanging there. out at the jail. He was from a different planet. Huh. He came there to just study people on that planet. So he let at himself the jail. get. Yeah, he let himself get captured. <laughs> How'd she get out? He, he busted her, her out. out? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. So he announces to his planet, "Hey, I'm taking a bride," and everybody's excited. You then, didn't mention the fact she's in a giant ball. Well, Either. that that's how he... She's in a big hamster ball. Yeah, well, he protected her with that energy uh, to take her from one planet to the next. In a hamster ball. Because she might not be able to, okay. you know, sure. survive that. But then when she shows up for the wedding, she has seven bridesmaids. Because they, when they met, he was like, oh, you're lucky. You're lucky number eight. And she goes, it's funny. Eight's always been my lucky number. And he's like, oh, it's so. So they come out and all the bridesmaids are wearing seven. And she's like, why are there? And he's like, because you're going to be wife number eight. <laughs> And he hands Yuck. her the eight. Oh, come on. And she's like, no. 
Titan you're, Man's got a whole bunch of into, wives. You're into polygamy. No, she doesn't yeah, say she, that. She, oh, where is this at? Hold on. Yep. Does she say polygamy? Only now does Lois learn that she's come to a planet where polygamy is legal. Oh, come on. And Titan Man says, how lucky I was to meet you, the girl with eight letters in her name, the same as I, the girl whose lucky number is eight, the girl fate has chosen uh, to be my number eight wife. And she goes, gas. But I don't want to be his eighth wife. I want to be his number one and only wife. Hmm. Right? She got seven killings to so, do. So here's what I love. He lays it out for her, like how it's going to work out. He goes, or for her, uh, Lois, darling, won't it be great? I can picture our married life now. Since you'll be my eighth wife, naturally, I'll see you every eighth day. What? You'll be. Naturally. Na you'll be eighth. Naturally. In, you'll be eighth in line for everything. And Lois says, the food never reaches number eight. I'll starve. <laughs> at, He's also kind of screwed in dances, February. Yeah. At dances, you'll dance every eighth dance with me. Oh. And then she's like, no, I don't want to. And Titan Man's, well, that's fine. I'll just use my tranquilizer rays to make you just be How fine. How many dances to marry are me. there? That Eight seems like a lot of dances. It does. Superman shows up at the wedding and Lois begs him, please help me, Superman. And Superman's like, are you kidding? I'll be happy to have you married and out of my hair. Uh, I say your I do's pretty, Lois. Go ahead. And then all of a sudden, there's another. Uh, tornado. No, turns out it was all a dream. She in the scuffle. Man, kind of, come yeah. on. This yeah. sucks. All a dream. All right. How lazy. Yeah, very. But. It's the 60s. So that brings us to our <laughs> last story. Everybody was lazy in the 60s. And it is a Batman one. This is from, we're going back to May of 1962. Is, it, is this gray suit Batman? Yeah. Okay. Um. Now I feel like something's good. Oh, uh, it's okay. I see it. Matt, what, are, uh, what does it say on the cover? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It says, Batman becomes Bat Baby. Oh, that's so, great. What happens? I'm when about, I saw the back, I thought it was Batmite. No, yeah. it's Bat Baby. I'm about to introduce you to DC's greatest, most underutilized villain. Are you ready for this? We're ready. So, this is a Batman issue where Batman gets turned into a baby. I will make it simple for this. While he just looks like a baby, he still is able to think like an adult. I absolutely speak like love an adult, this character. And has the strength of an adult, we find yep. out. Yep. But looks like a four year old. Yep. He would he would do really well in that alternate universe that Lois just dreamed up. Yes. So essentially, uh Batman and Robin are out on patrol one night and they're following a guy called Nails Finney, who's obviously a mobster of some sort because in the sixties. Well, his name is Nails. Yeah, that's who we go after. Well, when they barge in, they realize are you ready for the greatest? And Mason, you too. You ready for the greatest DC underutilized villain ever, especially of Batman's rogues gallery? Hang on just a second. No. Okay. <laughs> As they bust in, we see a guy behind all the mobsters in a lab coat with some machine. And Batman says, well, well, look who's part of the gang. Garth, the renegade scientist. Garth, the renegade scientist. Wonderful. That's right. Garth, the renegade scientist, he while won't Batman, even use a test tube. While Batman and Robin are punching the mobsters, yeah, yeah. shoots Batman with his ray here, and it shrinks Batman to a baby. I'm gonna so just like that, Garth is taking him out. I'm gonna mention that every one of these stories has had some sort of super secret ray in it. That's the common denominator here. Somebody gets shot with some they dumbass do. ray. Yeah. <laughs> Rays were really big in the 60s. So now he sh he's shrunken. Uh, Robin has to carry him out like a baby. So that's he doesn't fantastic. trip. I, okay, that's the cover right there. So that's he doesn't, wonderful. He doesn't trip over his costume. Look at costume. this one where he's all dumpy. <laughs> he looks really dumpy as a kid. <laughs> We then cut Does to he have the full size costume, but yet he's small? Yeah. So Is that why he looks so dumpy? Yeah, that's why oh, he's carrying him love so he that. doesn't trip over and reveal. So He's, the secret here is that Batman has been three babies in a bat suit the whole, whole time, time, just on top of each other's uh, shoulder. We cut to the Gotham Gazette, where here's where Garth is even more sinister. According to this letter, Garth had a camera hidden in his machine, and it photographed <laughs> Batman. Much as I hate to do it, I must print these uh, photos. The public has the right to know the truth. So Garth, the renegade only, scientist, the renegade scientist, please use his Christian name. Not not only <laughs> not only changed him into a baby. 
took pictures of him as a baby and yeah. sent it to the newspapers. Yeah. yeah. And the newspapers felt compelled to tell their readers the truth. This is the first viral that they bad printed guy. it. Yeah. And the head of the Gazette says, "Gangland turns Batman into baby. Oh. Criminal scientist uses ray that reverses Batman's growth." Oh my god! So, Wait, reverses his growth? Like, Batman was still growing. Well, I guess they, they were like, oh, they turned him into a baby. They reversed his growth. Oh, I guess that's how okay. they described it. That's how it works. So, see, I will tell you, Garth, again, not only did he take out Batman rather easily, he told the newspaper how he did it. They printed it. Nothing has happened to Garth. That's wonderful. Right? He is untouchable, this renegade scientist. Well, he's a renegade scientist. But we do find out that even as small Bruce Wayne, that he has the power of Small Bruce adult, Wayne. But he has a massive head. <laughs> Look at him with his tiny. little hands oh and his big head. <laughs> his head is almost as big as that bag he's hitting. There was an old bit. I feel like it was on all that where it was mm. like, or maybe it was on something else all or an old that. game that I just remember it was like human heads. And like little plastic baby arms. Oh yeah, and that's what sure. it kind of looks like. Like regular, I'm sorry, full size adult human heads yeah. and baby arms. Yeah. Uh, so he. Well, there's rigs- the Saturday Night Live Lawrence Welk thing. You know where? Oh, with the small, Kristen Wiig has yeah, the yeah, tiny yeah. little baby hands and there's the giant that too. forehead. Yes. Yeah. So Batman re does his oh, suit wow, so he can so go as small fight as Bat Baby. He just cuts off the legs and the arms and so now he's in shorts and a little, little t shirt, little they, bat shirt. They go and they try to hunt down uh the mob. <laughs> they fight crime. Robin and Bat Baby fight yeah, crime. Sure. He uses a gas filled balloon to like take him to the criminals and like is able to jump down and avoid gunfire and stuff. And take them out because he can punch just as, you know, like an adult. Well, it seems like, you know, you've not really lost anything with Bat Baby. No. You still have the intellect. You still have the the ability. The strength and everything. He's just tiny. He's smaller, which I think might be a positive if you spin it the right way. Well, and they use it to his advantage here in a bit. Yeah. Uh, The only disadvantage I can think of is he has to be burped after every crime. So then the Gotham papers start printing... (laughs) Bat Baby does okay for a kid. Yeah. And Bat Baby right. overcomes size and crooks. Oh, Great they're that's coming a good around one. on Bat yeah, Baby. Yeah, they are good. So all of a sudden, while they're they're still trying to hunt down Garth so they can find the ray to reverse, you know. Sure. Uh while they're there, all of a sudden Please Kathy, tell me they make him too big hold on. at the end. No, I'm, oh. this is about to take a, a turn. Great. This is about to take a turn you didn't see coming. All right, cool. Let's go. Uh Kathy Kane is there at Wayne Estate to visit Bruce. Kathy I guess Kane. Kathy Kane at the time in the comics is a love interest of some sort for Bruce. Who is she? Um, I think uh, Cassandra Kane is a Batwoman, right, oh. Mason? Is it Cassandra Kane? What's her first name? Is, that is Cassandra Kane? Kane Batwoman? No, she Cassandra Kane's one of the Batgirls. Then, I believe she's orphan. Okay, but who is... Yeah, yeah, then who is... Kate Kane. Kate Kane. Kathy Kane in this though is just a love interest of Bruce. I think that's a that, lot of Kanes running around. Well, I think they probably took spelled the name. different ways. Yeah. yeah, it's all because of Bob Kane. I mean, is that? I don't know. Maybe, potentially, like paying homage to maybe, hmm. maybe. I don't know. But, Tell you but, what, Bob, so, we'll make you a we'll make you a lady. He's not. We throw away at the end of the story. He's not listening. Oh, Bob's not. No, he's no longer. Is he with dead? Us. Yeah. Oh, when did this happen? A while. It's been a bit. <laughs> Um, I was hoping you'd say 20 years ago. <laughs> it <laughs> might have been. Hold on. Uh-oh. I don't know if it's been that long. It was, I believe it was like 90. Oh, wow. 99. It has been that long. Because I do remember the last Batman movie he saw was Batman and Robin. Oh, oh that no. poor guy. 98. Uh, don't give. Don't feel too 98. Bad yeah, because yeah, Jack, Jack Kirby's 94, Bob Kane's 98. Yeah, I mean, Bob Kane had did a lot of good, but don't forget about Bill Finger. Oh, for sure. I never forget about a finger. We, we've talked about that before, that there's a good documentary <laughs> called uh, Batman and Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, anyway. Batman Bat- and Finger doesn't have the same No, it doesn't. It. Mm-hmm. Not at all. So, Kathy Kane shows up, and she's like, I'm here to see Bruce. And he's like, oh, yeah, come on in, Miss Kane. And she walks around, and she sees a shadow of what looks like Bruce making out with another woman. <sighs> and she's like, ah, oh, that playboy, that kissing bug. Kissing I'll never bug. set foot in this house again. And she's so upset that she leaves. And so we see that it was just a like cardboard cutout. Yeah. Oh. Up against. Can't get enough of that. Remember, uh, it the, reminded me of the cutouts in the, the window the, of the old lady's knitting. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, there was that one, and then remember with the Seven Eleven one where the villain used paper cutouts. And oh kept yeah, yeah, diving yeah. And tackling yeah. them, and yeah. they were just. Yeah. 
cutouts are really big in comics. You uh, never knew that. Sure. But so they use it, and Robin's Amazing like, what you can do with paper these days. <laughs> Robin goes, she fell for it. Good thing you had that cardboard cutout prepared in advance. And he goes, she's- Why do they always over-explain it? But here's the best part of it, Mike. You ready for that swerve? Yeah. Bruce, young Bruce, says, she's so angry, she'll stay away from here for quite a while. Quite a while. Man, I get so mm. country sometimes, I feel like. Quite a while. Yeah. When I'm adult size again, I'll explain that the girl she saw was a cousin. What just happened? I don't understand. Mike, you ever kiss your cousin like that? No, I've never kissed my cousin like that. I don't have a lot of cousins, but where is this cousin? I don't know. He's is, that, just, it, is this Robin? Yeah, that's Robin, but the he's like, when that's I get Batman adult... Batman kissing, kissing Robin. No, he, that is. he's like, when I get adult again, I'm going to tell right, you the girl I'm, she saw me with is just one of my cousins. Yeah, but... That she saw me with my tongue oh, down my Oh, he's using the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought I thought he was saying there was an actual cousin in the room. No, he's saying, oh, the girl that you saw me kiss? Yeah. That was just my cousin. Just my cousin. Don't worry about it. We French all the time. Daddy says I'm the best. <laughs> yeah, basically, Batman's just like, hey, I'm into incest. And you're yeah, cool with it, right? yeah. I mean, it's a cousin. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Yeah, twice removed. Yeah. It's fine. <sighs> It was just I, I, maybe sign of the times. I've never kissed a cousin on the lips like that. I well, that know. was like a thing in the '60s, though. There was always this kissing cousins kind of thing. I guess. You know, well, then they were uh, uh, essentially it was big in country music for a while. I think <laughs> still might be. I don't listen. I don't know. Um, so bad. <laughs> Welcome baby. to Zach takes a shit on country music. <laughs> be a whole podcast man <laughs> there's some of it i like there's a lot of it i don't oh, this new uh, stuff sucks. but exactly but so uh pat baby takes off his bat suit to kind of like watch for the scientists to get on the swing yet yeah, is what you're saying <laughs> to yeah to watch out for garth the radical scientist or the renegade the scientist. renegade scientist. radical scientist a whole different guy he's got a skateboard yeah anyway they're able to finally hunt him <laughs> down uh, and includes a big a big battle including bat baby riding a giant horse holy shnikes look at him after um, he is on one of those those plastic ponies that is on a metal frame that just bounces up and down and he's going down the effing pier <laughs> knocking bad guys no, no, down with stairs. it it stares at a uh oh a it makes it so much better yeah well i'm just saying <laughs> this is look at this though since we're stairs so flat or maybe it's it's a ramp it's Sorry, a ramp stairs. yeah 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 wheelchair accessible uh anyway Tiny pony accessible of course you know what happens they find the ray he yeah. changes back to big yeah. size and then he decides to keep the bat baby suit as a memento well i would you can dress your dog up in it mm. whatever so there you go it's a some, halloween for dogs some silver age shenanigans for you all there just a reminder of a brief uh, childhood as <laughs> as always you can find us on instagram bro foe hero feel free to email us bros foes and heroes at gmail.com yeah do also, it we dare you check out the family of other podcasts that we are a part of at rogue media network.com rogue media network.com until next time stay safe everybody galicon Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.